Okay, guys, so we're live right now. Shout out to the chat because we're going to be reacting to this video here called The History of Roblox Horror Games 2006 to 2022 by Toasted Cherries. I'm going to go ahead and drop a sub. I'll have a link to his channel down below as well. Let's check it out. This is going to be a long one. Here we For go. the majority of Roblox's existence, horror has been one of the most popular genres of games to be found on the platform. Yeah. In the last few years, the quality of Roblox horror games has increased tenfold. And for October, Big time. I'm going to be taking a look at how Roblox horror games have evolved. Okay. Let me set the stage. The year is 2006, more specifically August 2006. Currently, Roblox is no more than a small... Oh my god, is that David Bazooki? No! That's David Bazooki? Bro. Oh my god. Bro. A startup company. The platform is in its very early infancy, and only about a thousand accounts have been registered. Multiplayer hasn't been rolled out yet for users' games, and the only- Wait! multiplayer didn't come out yet what so roblox came out and it was a single player game and the only real recognition the company had ever received came from Blockland players that made fun of it for being a subpar Lego game. User-made games at this time were very simple, most of them being brick battle games and simple building showcases. At the time, the most advanced Roblox game was an angel statue made of 8,000 bricks, which is why horror games weren't really an option when it came to Roblox at the time. A lot of people consider Forest of Desolation by Abyss to be the very first spooky game, as it was created in I made a video on this uh, a little bit ago. Yeah, it came out in 2006. It was the first scary Roblox game, and it wasn't really that scary. 2006 and has an all-around ominous vibe to it. The account Abyss, however, was password guessed all the way back in late 2009 and is now terminated. It was also found out that the original owner of the Abyss account was Shedletsky. Fast forward to October 2006, and while Roblox was still a niche online Lego game, it had grown a lot in that two months. Man, look at that login screen, oh, dude. Step. Look at that login screen. Oh my god, dude. Roblox only had a total of what? Like 12,000 people? Am I reading that right? That's crazy. Wow. And things like messaging, multiplayer support for user-made games, friends lists, and more have been added. In October 2006, the Roblox staff team released Haunted Mansion just in time for the Halloween season. The game is a brick battle game set in a haunted house on a cliff, which was pretty advanced for the time. I don't understand. Like, like some people be like, Quick Craft Roblox used to be so much better. It used to be so much better, Quick Craft. No. No, no, no. Since the mansion scene in the game has been a part of many other Roblox games, such as the Stalker, Untitled Tag Game, Natural Disaster Survival, and many more. While the game itself isn't a horror game, the map has had a large impact on the Roblox horror game genre. Bro, look at that mouse. That mouse is bigger than my forehead. That's how big the mouse was back then. Oh, intending to. Roblox in 2007 was a very different place. T-shirts, hats, body colors, teams, reporting, and chat filtering systems, spawn points, Roblox tickets, and many more features were added in 2007, making it a very important year for Roblox's growth and development as a platform. In May 2007, an account named Spirit was created as a part of what is widely considered nowadays to be the first Roblox creepypasta ever. The story goes that Spirit, along with a whole group of others that had accounts with Spirit in the name, were ghosts of dead Roblox users that had come back to haunt the platform. In June, the Spirit account would publish a game named the Torture Chamber, which terrified the then Roblox community. According to the description, the game would hack your account and add permanent wipeouts to your account, which act- Does this sound familiar? This is literally the first TikTok. And it's from 2007! Man! ...actually mattered to people at the time, and was mostly seen as a sign of being a noob. Upon joining the torture chamber, you would spawn in a black box covered in decals of various scary things. The game would display threatening and creepy messages before quickly adding hundreds of deaths to your player. At the time, there were- I don't want to hear a single word about that guy's name, okay? I saw it. I saw it. I know his name. I know. I saw it. 
I saw it. Weren't any games that were anything like this, leading to this game being seen as the scariest Roblox game of its time. Years later, after the drama surrounding the spirit accounts died out, Mike, an incredibly popular developer who joined in 2006, admitted to owning the spirit account. In September of 2007, the Roblox staff announced the Roblox Spooky Building Contest, a Halloween-themed contest asking to make a place that was either scary or scary but in a silly way for Halloween. Alongside it was a video contest, most of its entries being comedic Roblox- Y'all remember when Roblox used to do stuff like this? You know, like, uh, you know, events? Y'all remember that? I remember that bloopers with Halloween themes. In the contest were 10 categories and winning games for each. Best place with less than 200 bricks, cutest, most horrifying Halloween capture the flag, most clever script, best Halloween model, most atmospheric graveyard, creepiest tree model, best use of zombies, and scariest monster. For this chapter, however, we'll be looking at the most popular entry to this contest and winner of the most horrifying category, The Cursed House by Game Hero. The game involves exploring a presumably abandoned house with easter eggs and chain chomp face jump scares at every turn. The game was very well made for its time, however some aspects like the building for example- You know what blows my mind? Roblox started out, it was a literally a Lego ripoff. Like, <laughs> every- everything in this is just a giant Lego piece haven't held up so well. The winners would receive a 6 month long builders club membership, the eerie pumpkin head accessory, and a thousand robux. Only a thousand Robux, man. Not long later, in September of 2007, Stealth Pilot would release The Undead Coming. This is where Roblox horror games would go from small little building experiences with creepy themes to genuinely playable Roblox games with horror elements. The Undead Coming by Stealth Pilot, released in September of 2007, is a zombie survival game set inside a house that zombies, played by other players in the server, storm into to try and kill the humans. The humans are armed and can't go outside as there is a toxic gas that will kill you with too much inhalation of it. When humans die, they turn into zombies, and when either team is completely wiped out, the opposite team will win. So it's Call of Duty Zombies, basically. More people will recognize Jared Valdez's re-upload of this game from 2012, named Zombie Outbreak, than the original. Over the years, there have been many recreations and remakes of this game, most of which die pretty quickly. Can you name the game scene in this screenshot? Yes, I know this. This is um this is Area 51. This is Area 51. Right? The name of this game is actually Underground Base created You know, I look, that it's basically like come on. Like that counts. That counts by Icy Fresh in early 2008. Yeah, I know you didn't get that shit, I'm gonna be honest. Sometime in... Nobody heard that. Nobody heard that? Nobody heard that. Did you see a bad word? I didn't see a bad word. I, I, hey! You see bad? I didn't see a bad... No, no, it's not worry about it. Let's just move. Nobody? It's 2011 or 2012, this map was stolen, modified, and rebranded under the Area 51 subgenre of Roblox horror games. Throughout the mid-2010s, Area 51 games would become an iconic part of Roblox's history, with some Area 51 games receiving as high as a billion visits. Fast forward to September 2008, a Roblox user named Bobulator has just published a horror game by the name of Face Your Fears 1, The Haunted. Hotel. The first and most popular game in this series from 2008 places you in a huge haunted hotel with easter eggs and scares hidden throughout the map. Your main goal is to escape. The game was certainly ahead of its time by quite a few years and was one of the first exploration based Roblox horror games with a genuine this goal looks to cool. become popular. In 2009, horror games that were genuinely trying to scare the player started to become a staple of Roblox. The most popular of these horror games from 2009 is Face Your Feet. I just want to point something out. I don't know. I don't know how many of you guys know this, but Roblox used to not have a chat filter that used to not exist. So you could literally say anything you wanted and it wouldn't get filtered. Like, for example, th there's no filter. You know what I mean?
There was no what? filter. The most popular of these horror games from 2009 what? is Face yeah. Your Fear, not plural, The Hospital, created by Haunted USA and Burton 12 without any correlation to Bobby Later's Face Your Fears series. Alright, so I found out while editing that someone reported this 13 year old horror game and got it taken down so I cannot record any footage no! on it. The game starts you off in a dilapidated hospital with no one inside and the main goal is to find a way out without dying. This game had a massive impact on the Roblox horror games of its time and introduced a lot of common tropes seen in retro Roblox horror games that hadn't really been used before this. This game also uses the newly implemented custom GUI feature which was rolled out only months before the game's release in 2009. Another early example of a Roblox horror game from 2009 in a similar style to The Hospital is Seven Days by Bransonator 1. The game takes place Place in a variety of dark and abandoned facilities of some sort, and is best described as a creepy walking simulator with jump scares and events happening. This sort of gameplay will be a common theme throughout the next few years until around 2015. That reminds me of um the scary elevator or whatever it was called. From the time horror games were just starting to become popular on Roblox, this looks a good. subgenre of horror themed obbies and cart ride games became equally popular. The most popular examples of this are Journey Through the Haunted Mansion by Copyright <laughs> and Escape. <laughs> Bro, he made a, a, a copyrighted game and his name is Copyright. That's amazing. That's incredible. The tension on Friday the 13th by basically. Escape detention on Friday the 13th. Dang. Spell O2A. The first is an obby set in a haunted mansion created in 2009, and the second is a half obby, half walking simulator created in 2012 with some of the goofiest jump scares I think I have ever seen. At the turn of the decade, Roblox myths and creepypastas, especially with games attached to them, increased in popularity. A very good example of this is Noli, a myth that started in February of I made a video on this guy! It started when Roblox user Yale University posted on the Roblox forums about a mysterious account with a glitched profile named Noli. Surprised by the cryptic nature of both his account and the game found on an affiliated account- Dude, look at this old Roblox ad. This old Roblox ad on the website. Here it is. Gain detergent. Save $1 now for your greatest sin. Amazing. Amazing. Account and the game found on an affiliated account named The Tempest. Upon joining, you will spawn in front of a dark temple with a figure named ASPX standing in it. In front of him is a red triangle, which will kill you upon touching it. Behind the temple is a teleporter to an island which seems cheerful and much brighter, with a figure named Reverse ASPX telling you to leave. Standing in the temple near spawn for too long after standing on the red spike will make Noli angry, and the temple will crumble with you in it. Due to its cryptic nature, a rumor spread that playing the game or angering Noli inside the game would cause your account to be deleted, which is why in this nearly 7 year old footage, me and a friend are playing on all accounts. It's important to remember while looking at this game that myth games weren't really a genre of Roblox games yet. That's crazy dude. Like, this, like, the, 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 you know, play this game and your account will get hacked. Like, that stuff existed even back then. That's crazy. That stuff's been going on since Roblox started. Yeah. The trend of Roblox horror games that essentially boil down to walking simulators in abandoned buildings with jump scares continued far into the 2010s, with games like Fear, spelled as an acronym by 1Dev2, becoming popular. Fear, whose title was stolen from a completely unrelated horror FPS game from 2005, is almost precisely what I mean by Roblox horror games, with especially loose plotlines whose gameplay can be condensed to holding W and turning the camera sometimes. In the game, you walk through various rundown buildings with jump scares until an explosion occurs at the end which leaves you hospitalized. This game was copied and re-uploaded numerous times throughout the 2010s with the most popular example of this being Paranormal Activity by Nuclear Burn. It's funny to me how both versions of the game were able to rip off names of non-Roblox franchises and both versions have nothing to do with said franchises in the slightest. This game inspired many further I love- wait, go back, go back, go back, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. 
Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Wait a second. It's coming. It's coming. Okay, check this out. What is this game Paranormal Activity about? Well, let's see. Uh, Animal Zoo, Tycoon, uh, Waldo Movie, Fish, Barbie, SpongeBob Patrick, Squidward, Crab, Shark Wave, Lava, Obby Escape, Ninja Space, Build Tournament, Minecraft, and Jared. Okay. Said franchises in the slightest. This game inspired many further Roblox horror games and was massively popular at the time of its creation. Zombie games made inside Roblox also evolved quite a bit in the year 2010, with No with a total of 7 O's releasing the game Zombie Tower, which now has over Bro, 7 a half million face. visits. You start with substandard weapons outside of a tower of 29 floors, and as you progress through the game, you earn money and are able to upgrade from the weapons you started with. The game was viral on Roblox in the era of its creation, but is now broken due to the deprecation of a Roblox Studio feature named Filtering Enabled. 2011 was a huge year for Roblox horror games and their evolution with many iconic Roblox horror games being created, as well as the first ever Area 51 clone which was mentioned earlier. When Roblox users online talk about classic horror games, Hospital Nightmare 3 is one of the most remembered, only third to Area 51 I've played this! I've played this one! I have played this one! and Bloody Mary Awakened Trapped, which we will get into later. In 2011, a Roblox user named Adrian928 published Hospital Nightmare 3, another walking simulator type Roblox horror game set in a hospital. The game opens with your character in a hospital lobby, but after a two hour long trip to the bathroom, you return to the lobby to find everyone dead. For the next three or four years, the game would be re-uploaded countless amounts of times, hitting the front page almost every time. The original was eventually taken down for an unknown reason rumored to be because wait 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 wait. you telling me wait hold on where's it at Almost every time the original was a so he made a horror game and the thumbnail was kids sliding on a slide so kids would be like oh this looks fun i get to slide on a slide i love slides and then they click on it and then it's a horror game that's that's amazing. That's amazing. Eventually taken down for an unknown reason, rumored to be because of a report that was filed on the game due to its jump scares, which haven't aged too well. In 2011, myth slash creepypasta games also became even more popular. Here we go. Surrealism is a myth game by Shockman25 that was initially created in 2011 and then entirely remade four years later and will I've be covering this. both versions, the 2011 version first. Upon joining, you'll spawn in front of a tree with a gray statue in front of it, with the screen flashing black every few seconds. After a bit of time passes, a looping music box audio clip will start to play. To progress, walk behind the tree and touch the purple teleporter. You will be teleported to an invisible path in the sky with a crystal above it, and another statue will appear and block your way to it. A message will cover the screen, or a quarter of the screen if you're not playing this game in 2011, telling you that you don't belong here. Upon touching the crystal, the sky will turn purple and messages will flood the screen saying you and leave now. The game will then kick you. Initially, the warning would tell you that the server had shut down, but now it tells you that your Roblox client has detected unexpected behavior. This game became mildly popular in 2013 when people on the Roblox forum started talking about it, with some users listing it as one of the scariest Roblox games. For each year, we will be Dude, it blows my mind. Like, it's literally just a character that does this. And everyone, everyone was like, This is the scariest Roblox game I've ever played in my life. Oh my god, it's so scary. It's so scary, don't play it. Don't play it, you'll literally have a heart attack. Don't scare it, don't, don't, don't play. Looking at the trends seen in Roblox horror games that start, and for 2011, we're taking a look at Built to Survive game. Built to Survive the Zombies is a classic zombie survival game created by Danger Tim 112 in 2011. This game gives you nine different plots of land and the stamper tool to survive different this. waves of zombies that spawn every few minutes. The original stamper tool is now broken, but people in the Roblox community have made remastered versions of the original game. This game created a second wave of Built to Survive based games which were very popular on Roblox throughout the early to mid 2010s, with the original game having over 19 million visits.
And now, it's time to complete the trilogy of iconic old Roblox horror games I was talking about earlier. Sometime between late 2011 and early 2012, an already well-known Roblox horror game developer named Haunted USA published a game named Bloody Mary Awakened Trapped. Initially being a split game of two parts named Awake and Trapped respectively before being conjoined sometime in 2012, Bloody Mary Awake and Trapped is an absurdly influential and iconic Roblox horror game about the Bloody Mary ritual. After seeing a breaking news story, I remember, oh my god, okay, alright, 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 this girl in third grade told me that, okay, so let me explain. Near our school, there was like a forest, okay? It's like a bunch of trees, okay? It wasn't really like a forest, but you get the idea, like a bunch of woods. And this girl in third grade told me that Bloody Mary lived in the woods. And at one time, there was a kid from the school that went in the woods, and he got eaten by Bloody Mary. And I didn't know she was lying about it. And she said that if I go home and say Bloody Mary in the mirror, then she's going to come out of the forest and eat me. And, dude, that scared me so bad. I was terrified. And then I found out it wasn't real. She lied to me. Story about 22 dying after trying the Bloody Mary ritual. You go to try it yourself and embark on a long horror platformer adventure. <laughs> oh, shit. What the fuck is that? <laughs> oh! It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. There was definitely not a swear word there. There was there was definitely not a swear word there. I did you see a swear word? I didn't see a swear word. I didn't hear a swear word. Everything's fine. Don't <laughs> I didn't, I didn't see anything. You see anything? I didn't see anything. Like games like Hospital Nightmare 3, this game became as popular as it did because of how many times it was copied over. With only a single search, you can find the original Roblox Studio project file for the game and upload it yourself if you want. Sequels known as Gone and Bloody Mary's Chamber were teased in the following years but never ended up releasing and still haven't after over 10 years. At one point, I don't think a they're coming was out. set up for fans to find the pre-release copy of Bloody Mary 2, Gone. On, but it was never solved and still hasn't been to this day. Throughout 2013, Roblox horror games continued to grow and become a staple of Roblox and one of the most popular game genres on the platform. As well, a few very important updates were released in 2013 which benefited Roblox horror game developers a lot. For example, in September of 2013, custom audio uploads were introduced. Beforehand, people were just slowing down and speeding up already uploaded audios posted by the Roblox admins. Slender Sanator- That's not a thing anymore, RIP DUDE! That's not not a thing anymore. Man. Orium by Daypale, a Roblox remake of an already existing mod for Slender, was one of the first games to truly capitalize off of this new feature, and was praised for its well-executed atmosphere and use of custom sound effects and ambience. While it hasn't aged too well, it was impressive for the era of its creation. Another well-received Roblox horror game from 2013 is the demo for a game named Distilled, created by Tyridge77. The game's main focus is exploring an abandoned school with various objectives in mind, with the main objective being finding your lost brother and maintaining a sanity meter while doing so. In 2015- So basically, Amnesia. The game was shut down as the developers behind it wanted to rework the game's plot and hasn't been made public since. Many of the players who tested out the game said it was exceedingly well made. Between 2013 and 2014, there was a huge increase in overall Roblox game quality, with newly added features like dynamic lighting making a large difference in how Roblox horror games were presented. 2014 saw the rise of elevator games on Roblox. There we go! This one I remember! Everybody knows the elevator games. You sit in the elevator, and you would ride down, and then something scary would happen, and then you'd get back in the elevator, you'd ride down, something scary would happen, and like the last person standing um i think like got like points or something like that with one of the earliest being the horror elevator by z mad zeus the game would set players in an elevator with 24 floors all having horror themes with the main goal for the majority of them being to survive the floors the game was well received by the roblox community having over 63 million visits as of 2022 in 2021 the game was closed and the title and description were set to f the game also inspired the creation of the normal elevator yep. in 2015 which now has over half a billion visits 
In September 2014, the Roblox staff held a game creation contest named Scare Us Silly, tasking Roblox developers with creating their best and scariest. Y'all remember when Roblox used to do that? <laughs> Y'all remember when Roblox used to do stuff like that? Cause I do. Horror game. For this section of the video, I'll be looking at two of the best made entries of this contest, starting with Red 44 Satter 44. Red 44 Satter 44 is a Roblox horror game about a person who formerly worked at a company this. named Chimera AI Innovation, specializing in AI based robots. The robots, however, started to go rogue and employees started to go missing, with you being tasked to get rid of said robots. The gameplay focuses on the exploration of the facility with a watch that tells you when to hide and when it's safe to explore. I remember people saying this was the scariest Roblox game ever when it came out, and it has held up pretty well for being an 8 year old Roblox game. Confined was the winner of the 2014 Scare Us Silly contest created by Tyridge77, Stroud, and Legoman654. The game was created in 10 days and is a single player game based on exploring an 1800 spirit ridden household. A few years after the game's creation, Tyridge77, the main creator of the game- WAIT! Ty Ridge, why does that sound familiar? Ty Ridge 77? Do we know him? Ty Ridge 77. Is this the guy? This is the guy. What game has he made? Hasn't he made a bunch of like big games? Oh, the Wild West game. Oh, he made that game. The Wild West. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Handed the project over to another user named Spyhawk722 to manage it, and he did for years until it stopped being updated in 2017. Much like before, there was a colossal increase in quality between horror games created in 2014 and horror games created this in 2015. This is when I started playing. This is when horror games go from clunky free modeled walking simulators with crude jump scares to people's attempts at genuine horror games with storylines behind them. Lightbulb is a top down perspective survival horror game created by Zeeker. That looks that cool. I've never seen March that. 2015, set in an almost maze like structure. This game held up incredibly well for being seven years old and was actually nominated for best single player game in the fourth annual Bloxy Awards. The majority of the gameplay boils down to exploring, hiding, solving puzzles, and answering phone calls, with the game having two endings, a good and bad ending. Along with horror games, Roblox myth slash creepypasta games evolved quite a bit between 2013 and 15. Surrealism by Shockman25 was remade four years later after its initial creation, and it's much more advanced than its previous version. The game contains multiple puzzles to complete and this really cool part where you have to spin your camera to reveal a room, before the climax of the game which instead of trying to be spooky focuses quite literally on surrealism, instead of including a wide variety of Roblox creepy past the cliches as the previous version did. For 2016, I have two games to talk about, both of which are very popular and hold up pretty well to this day. I In know these games! In 32-bit PC published Identity Fraud, a now pretty successful Roblox horror yes! game based around traversing various mazes and solving puzzles with a variety of monsters to take on, such as a monster that will pretend to be the player that it most recently killed. The game does actually have lore to it, with dialogue dispersed throughout the game, developing a story about a mentally- Although I don't think the game works in Anymore. I don't think you can play it properly because I'm pretty sure whenever they did the audio update that removed the copyrighted sounds, I think it um it deleted a bunch of the sounds in the game. Patient who believes their doctor has poisoned There's a swear word in the flee the facility chapter. Okay. The maze. This game also has a sequel released nine months later, which goes even further in depth with the lore behind the series. The first game alone now has over 230 million visits as of 2022. Survive the Night, formerly known as Before the Dawn, is a multiplayer Roblox horror game that was initially released in 2016. I love this game, dude! I played it so much! to be survivors, heroes, or slashers. Heroes are people that help survivors by healing them or attacking the slasher. The slasher's job is to kill the survivors and heroes, and the survivor's job are to survive until 6am. Yeah. As of 2022, both versions of the game have a total of over 120 million visits. These sorts of multiplayer horror games were incredibly popular in the mid 2010s and still are i think this was the first roblox horror game i ever played like actually uh before dawn 
I think so, yeah, yeah. With games like Survive the Night being much more advanced than, say, games like Darkness by Lolaris created three years prior. 2017 saw a huge rise in the popularity of myth games and other weird surrealist Roblox games, half in part because of these games being covered by YouTubers like Flamingo, especially games related to the cult family and groups like Mugen. An early example of this is created by Mugen in March of 2017. While not necessarily a horror game, many YouTubers covered games like it and talked about how they were some of the strangest games the platform had seen. In July of 2017, AW Apps created Flee the Facility, a Roblox recreation of the horror game Dead by Daylight that keeps the blocky Roblox art style. In the game, there are five players, four players being survivors who have to hack computers and unlock an exit to escape, and one Wait, Flee the Facility came out in 2017? player being chosen as the beast tasked to kill survivors in visits, making it one of the most- We're good. I got the swear word. We're good. Popular Roblox games, period. In 2018, horror-influenced story games became incredibly popular on Roblox. A good example of this is Samson XVI's Camping, which that is- That game came out in 2018?! Oh my god, I'm getting old, dude! Are you serious?! Bro, I thought that game came out in 2020! This game came out in 2018?! To no one's surprise, a game about a camping trip that goes wrong. The original camping game now has over 200 million visits and inspired many horror-based story games to come, like Break In by Cracky4, a game about- THAT GAME CAME OUT IN 2019?! NO! WHAT?! WAIT, WHAT?! NO! NO 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 THAT GAME CAME OUT IN 2020! WHAT?! Am I having a midlife crisis right now? A game about surviving home invasions created a year later, which now has over 1.6 billion visits. 2019 was- Bro, that game's still popular. Look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Break in story. Look, it's literally got 13,000 players. It's literally got 13,000 players. Like, what, six years later? Also a huge year for the evolution of Roblox horror games, with many now famous horror games being released. 3008, created by Ugly Burger Zero in 2019, is a survival horror that game. That game came out in 2019. I saw an I thought it came out last year. EP of the same name, where you were tasked with surviving overnight in an infinite IKEA with no exit. In the game, you can use whatever furniture you find to make a base and survive the deadly workers trying to get you to leave the infinite IKEA, which is, you know, impossible to leave. As of 2022, 3008 has over a billion visits and is a very well received game by the Roblox community. Isle is a multiplayer survival horror game about waking up stranded on an island and no, finding this game came out 2021. There, there's no way this game. No, uh, no, it did not come out in 2019. No way. Way to survive the catawampus that comes out at night. At the start of the game, you and the other players are on some sort of ship with armed guards before the ship is destroyed and you pass out, waking up to find the door open. The game has four endings and is incredibly well received because of how well made the game is. As of 2022, Isle is on its way to hitting 60 million visits. The Mirror is a Roblox horror game created by Egross in 2019 about a psychological phenomenon of visual distortions caused by staring at yourself in the mirror in a dim setting for too long. The Mirror takes that and exaggerates it by creating creepy visual distortions that end up killing you at the end of the game. The game is very well made for how short it is and it has over 20 million visits as of 2022. Much like 2019, 2020 was a huge year for Roblox horror games. Piggy, released by Minitune yeah. in January of that year, is currently the most popular Roblox Fun horror fact. game of all- Fun fact, Piggy and I share the same birthday, January 28th. ...all time, with over 11 billion visits. I can't even count that high. The game is a multiplayer survival horror game that blends both the gameplay of Granny with the visuals of Peppa Pig. Similar to previous games like Survive the Night and Flee the Facility, one player is chosen to be Piggy and the rest have to escape. Due to its large player base, the creator has made all sorts of lore, new game modes, books, chapters, and many more. When it was re Did y'all know? Hold on, I want to show y'all something. Look at this. 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 Piggy is so popular. Right? They, they got they got piggy underwear. 
I, I'm not joking. That that's that's piggy underwear, and it's 100 percent cotton, and it's softer than ever. And I'm wearing some right now. Release Piggy grew incredibly quickly, being the fastest game to reach a billion visits in Roblox history only 83 days after its initial publication. Now on to 2021, which I'd like to call the year of holy shit, why are there so what? many chapter-based mimic clones? The mimic is in Massively popular chapter-based Roblox horror game created in January of that year by a team of four developers. Each chapter has its own monsters and plot lines, with the majority of monsters throughout the game being based on Japanese urban legends. The game became incredibly popular throughout 2021, being regarded as one of the Roblox scary babes. I think he had a completely different experience of that game than I did, because I played that same game. And there was not a single babe in that game. I don't know what in the world he's talking about. The highest quality horror games available on Roblox. After the creation of the Mimic, Roblox saw a massive escalation in Roblox chapter-based horror games that are very obvious clones of the Mimic, where the gameplay usually boils down to being chased down in a maze by a monster while collecting a variety of items, and I'm not going to be covering any of them. Much like what happened with Mimic-style chapter games in 2021, Nextbot-based games became a huge thing on Roblox in 2022. The two Nextbot focused horror games I'll talk about here are Evade and Nico's Nextbots. Evade is a Nextbot based Roblox horror game created by Hexagon Development Community based on the Nextbot Chase mod for Gary's mod. Sometimes tasks are given to you to complete with various unlockable items obtainable in the game. There's also a long list of special rounds, some only being accessible with private VIP servers. In only four months, the game has racked up over 750 million visits. Nico's Nextbot. I never really liked the next bots games like i like them but like they're not a game that i could play for like three hours straight you know like the last game is yet another nextbot based horror game more focusing on the spooky side of things than goofy mean nextbot created in july of 2022 by nico patty the game has garnered over 270 million visits with updates constantly being added such as the new blood moon or blackout updates and finally, the last horror game released only Doors. a few months ago, Doors. Doors by Lightning Splash is one of the fastest growing Roblox horror games of all time and is a game about doors. You start off in a hotel at- I think Doors is the best Roblox horror game. Like, it's just like, look at it. I mean, it, it doesn't even look like a Roblox game. Like, it's just, it's that good. One, and have to get all the way to door 100 without dying to the wide variety of entities that are up to get you, such as Rush, will force you to hide in a vent locker or under a bed when the lights flicker, or figure a blind creature that owns a library in the hotel and can only be beaten by completing this fucking stupid ass puzzle. Oh! I mean, that's one way to describe it, but jeez, man. Screen. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only been out since August of 2022, and the game has already garnered over 762 million visits. When it came out, this game blew up because of how well it was made and the impressive amount of work that went to the visual aspects, the scripting, animation, and more. It's funny knowing that these clunky walking simulators from less than 10 years ago and something like Doors or Nico's Next Spots came from the same game platform. Yeah. To sum up this video, I'll make a graph about the evolution of these Roblox horror games. The graph has four ranks, unfinished, this sucks, effort put in, and good-ish. Here's how it goes. Good. <laughs> no, I think, I think it's more like this. Hold on. No, 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 no. I think, I think it's more like this. I think it's more like this. So I think I think it goes like uh, here. I'll, I'll be orange. I think it goes goes like this here. Let me let me make my brush big. How do I make my brush big? There we go. All right, that's good. All right, make it max size. Okay, so I think it goes a little bit like this, a little bit like this, and then I think it goes up big time, and then I think it goes up big time like this that's what i would say because like piggy was a big step up even though it wasn't like a horror horror game um and then obviously the mimic happened so like piggy mimic doors you know what i mean yeah 
If you enjoyed, do things you do after watching a video you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. I love this video. I'm going to like it and have a link to it down below. That's a good video. That's a good video. Wow. Dang. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. It did have a swear word. It did have a swear word. You know what? I kind of want to watch the... um. I kind of want to watch the uh, the John Doe one. The John Doe incident. Let me see if there's... Uh, let's see. The John Doe incident. Oh, whoa. There's my video on it. We're, we're just going to watch my video. John Doe. It's named... <laughs> Oh, man, dude, I can't watch my own video. The John and Jane Doe rumors are amongst some of the most popular Roblox myths to have ever won, minus the few hundred people who were both of the edges and, and fixed the bug. It was patched sometime afterwards. Hero had Frage Elixir saying... Okay, all right, all right, all right. We'll watch, we'll watch this video, too. We'll watch this video, too. Okay, all right. All right, you guys ready? We're gonna watch this video, too. Okay, guys, so we're live right now. Shout out to the chat. We're going to be reacting to this video by Toasted Cherry. It's called The John Doe Incident Five Years Later. Roblox's most famous hacker. Let's do it. The John and Jane Doe rumors are amongst some of the most popular Roblox myths to have ever surfaced. Yeah. From late 2016 to early 2017, rumors of two mysterious accounts from the earliest days of Roblox's existence coming back after 11 years to ruin the platform were rampant, being the cause of community-wide panic. And Everybody made videos on this. I remember Roblox was like, hey guys, don't make videos on this. Like, don't do it. And you know what we did? We did it anyway. <laughs> video, I'm going to be talking <laughs> about John anyway. and Jane Doe, the rumors about these accounts, and how they impacted the platform. Yeah. So let's start from the very beginning of the John and Jane Doe story. Throughout some parts of 2004 and 2005, Roblox was in its stealth testing phase. This means that Roblox was close to everyone, minus the few hundred people who had made an account on the platform in the short periods of time. Yeah, they only had like 100 people playing the game. Like it was, it was not a lot of people at all sign up was open. In June of 2005, two accounts were created by Roblox employees, one being named John Doe and the other being named Jane Doe. These two dummy accounts were used for testing purposes throughout late 2005 and early 2006 before both of them went offline for the last time on February 27th, 2006. This is when the Roblox beta state- I think they also used them to, um, play with other people. So like there wasn't a lot of people playing Roblox at the time. So whenever someone got onto a game, Roblox would see that and they would log onto these accounts and play with the with the player. So that way it wasn't just, you know, this random dude playing a game all by himself. He had someone to play with. Stage ended and sign up was officially opened again. Along with all other 2004 and 2005 accounts, their join dates were changed to the 27th of February, 2006. For the next 11 know years, that. time went on and Roblox started to find its footing as a company and grow as an online platform. Throughout these 11 years, many people started to question these accounts. At the time, there was little to nothing known about them. For years, not only did they accept all friend requests for quite some time, but their account bios read, I'm John Doe and I'm Anonymous, and I'm Jane Doe respectively, adding to the mystery of these two accounts. Despite the fact that it said the two accounts last logged on in 2006, they both had not only eggs from the 2010 egg hunt knockouts on their account, and official Roblox badges such as the Inviter Badge and the Combat Initiation Badge. Sometime in 2012 or 2013, there was an exploit found where you can award- People didn't know that they were like fake accounts. They thought that like players on them. They didn't know that Roblox owned these accounts. Award badges from your games to any account you wanted. A Roblox developer named Clone Trooper 1019, creator of games such as The Stalker, Super Nostalgia Zone, and more, found this exploit and decided to award early accounts badges from his spleef game to try and catch the Roblox staff team's attention and fix the bug. It was patched sometime afterwards. All of these things combined made these accounts incredibly mysterious and rumorous 
rumors spread about them for years. Nobody knew why these things were happening to these accounts despite them not logging in for years. Yeah. In early 2017, people started to notice how even after John Doe had stopped accepting friend requests, a few people such as the community with a zero had friended them anyway. This was due to an exploit where you can friend someone without them having to accept the request. Rumors started to spread because of clickbait videos made by I made a lot of these videos. This was one of the first big live streams we did. Look at this, dude. Rage Elixir, Big B Stats, uh, Inquisitor Master, Dan TDM, Green Lego Cats, um, The Healthy Cow, Think Noodles, John Doe is back in Roblox to hack us all. Clickbait videos made by YouTubers such as Equilix, Kazok, Dan TDM, Think Noodles, and Rage Elixir, saying that John and Jane Doe were gonna come back on March 18th, 2017, and everyone who logged in on that day would be hacked. The community also supported these rumors as they were friends with other mysterious exploiters that had rumors about them, such as 1x1x1x1. As you would expect, March 18th came and went, and nothing happened. Roblox even had to put out a blog post in the following days talking about the true origin of the accounts and that they didn't do any I remember this Ro yeah Roblox it, it got so bad that Roblox had to put out a blog post saying guys you're not gonna get hacked don't worry about it it's fine these accounts were made by David Bazuki for testing purposes uh you can see it right there testing purposes and yeah, you're not going to get hacked. Don't worry. Anything. They're just test accounts. And that was the story of John and Jane Doe. Even now that it's been five years since the supposed day where John and Jane Doe would return, I get a lot of comments every time I mention the two accounts talking about how scared they were that their accounts were going to get hacked when they were much younger. If you enjoyed this video, you I had a friend who played Call of Duty. He was a Call of Duty streamer and, um... His, uh, someone he knew, his son played Roblox, and I remember he messaged me, and he's like, yo, is Roblox really gonna get deleted on John Doe Day? And I'm like, I don't know, man, because, like, at the time, I didn't know. I was a, I was new to Roblox. I had just started playing. Uh, this hadn't happened before. I had no idea. It was big. Two things you usually do after you enjoy a video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, I'll have a link down below as always. To, um, man, I, I, John Doe, man, I love John Doe. I love John Doe. Such good memories, man. Such good memories, dude. Those were good videos. Those were very, very nice, very nice videos. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I would like to apologize to Creek Rat for the amount of times I swore in the horror games video. Sorry. Oh my god, that's good. That's good. It's okay, man. Watch swear words. I didn't hear any swear words. I didn't hear any swear words. <laughs> Wait, what is this? Wait a minute, what is this? What did Roblox tweet? 